Uh, hi everyone and welcome back. Let's try to find the differences between the GraphQL and the REST based APIs. Okay, and what we are going to do is we simply just go through both these approaches. Okay, what is REST and what is GraphQL and their differences. How, like in which particular case you can use REST in which particular case you can use GraphQL. So till now all the applications like I have this user, this is the client of my application and I have this API. I mean if we talk about typical two-tier architecture where you have the APIs and you have the database, right, what do you do is this is your database and these are your API services. Your client will talk to the APIs. Okay, this is actually using some front-end application to talk to our API server and then API will actually request this data to the HTTP resources, I mean the database resources. So this is database can be MySQL, Postgres or anything else, right? So what is the difference here? Here we are writing the REST APIs, I mean the APIs can be anything but here particularly we are talking about REST APIs. REST APIs means we are exposing the the REST endpoints through this service. It can be Node.js service, which is exposing HTTP GET, PORT, POST, DELETE, PATCH, all these different methods through this service, right? Once you have all these resources available as a REST API, our front end will make axios, patch, all these calls, and will talk to this particular REST endpoint, right? It can be simply like API, v1, let's say users, right? You will make API v1 users, HTTP post, get, put, delete, and you will actually get the data. What if once I get the user list and I wanted to make a get user by ID also? So there is another call I'm making. That call is something like this. Here I got the user. Now I'm making a particular request for the ID. Right, and then further I will be doing update, delete and all these things. So again, I will be making a call for this particular resource and for doing the update, right? So whenever we wanted to gather the information, we first of all, we couldn't limit the fields. We will be getting all the user data in this API call. We will be getting the user data in this API call. Yes, you can limit the data while doing the MySQL or MongoDB query, but you can't limit at the API layer level, right, API level. It will give you the, all the user fields, it will give you all the list of users in an array, right? So a lot of data you are getting and here you just want to fetch the data of a particular user based on the ID. Here also you will unnecessarily get a lot of fields which I don't even need. I just need an email ID or logged in true or false, something like that, right? So we are actually doing over fetching using REST. GraphQL used its query language which is like same request format. Here we will always make HTTP post call. And in the HTTP post, we are going to send a query to the GraphQL server. So here, it can be the same Node.js GraphQL server we have. And if we just replicate the same scenario, here I can write. So here I will be doing HTTP post call. And I will be just specifying what I exactly need. Now it can also talk to the same database. There is no problem with that. It can talk to existing REST APIs. Here there are multiple options you have. If you have the REST endpoints, like you, you already have a legacy services already written, you don't want it to discard them, or you can also talk directly to the database. Right, so you got multiple options. If I'm writing something from the scratch, I will talk to the database. If I'm not writing something from the scratch, then I will go with this uh, database. I mean, I will just, Connect to the legacy APIs and GraphQL server is capable enough to transform this data into the GraphQL queries and mutations, okay? So with the GraphQL, there is a learning curve which isn't uh, nearly as established the REST APIs, but GraphQL is growing and it is becoming more and more popular. Now you can see all different technology support is there. GraphQL is supported by almost every language. You talk about Java, JavaScript, Ruby, Python, everything is there, right? So the disadvantage you are doing, you are having with the rest is there is overfetching, a lot of uh, round trip time. We are getting unnecessary data, I mean, which we don't even need. So overfetching, a lot of round trip calls to the server, 
which we can reduce by just making a graphical query call in a single query we can get all the data right so our queries looks different like rest api resources it will give you the json payload it will also works on the same http protocol here in the graphql we are writing the api definition using types using schema right and the same types you will receive while you are actually getting the response so if we talk about similarities right rest and graphql both have the idea of a resource here we will be dealing against user resource employee employee student course university right there is there will be some resource against which we will be making these calls right both can be fetched uses using http get request or using curl right you can make a curl request here in the graphql most of the calls will be the http post and in the body you will be sending the query both are returning the json request json response sorry right and in the rest the endpoint you call is the identity of the object right here we are saying the identity of the object is user i am looking for the user's data here if i do http get users forward slash id that means i'm saying i need get user by id okay so in graphql the identity is separate from what you fetch it that's a difference i'm talking about here you see the the url will tell you what you are looking for here your query and mutation will tell you so it's different it's like a hidden what you are expecting from the response right so if you talk about simple rest what is the api schema right if i just put things here put post delete i will just do the indentation right and now if we talk in terms of graphql it's all about query and mutations which we are going to send in the http body right so you will say that like these are the http get put post patch all these are actually resources here you are trying to get the books resources author by id book by id i mean get all the comments for a particular book get all the comments for a particular or create a comment for a particular book resources telling you the meaning itself but in the graphql we are actually hitting the http post call first of all this will always be http post and in the body you will be sending the query query object right that query object will tell you what it is doing either you will be sending a query or mutation mutation means you will be updating the resource so if we talk about the graphql right the list of endpoints in the rest api is similar to the list of fields in the query and mutation first of all how the query and mutation looks like it is nothing but a, a json object in your query okay both will have a both have, to have a way to differentiate if api request be passing query and it can be as simple as a mutation also i can expand it a little bit some argument a particular resource or something like this right so this is how the graphql works that is the rest api we have seen what is the difference what is the similarity right so in in rest apis like if you talk about these mobile clients and all these things which are actually working on the low bandwidth right we can't make lot lot of calls okay give me the user user by id then get the comments for this particular user on this particular post lot of api calls we are making with the help of rest but the same thing we can actually get all the data into a single query using graphql right so i mean we are actually saving the bandwidth we are actually saving the round trips which you are making to the the api server right so these are the actual benefits of the graphql if we use it and graphql is same as the http protocol there is no major difference here we are using query and mutation to send it in the post and send to the server and server will respond as based on what we are requesting either we are requesting the data or we are doing a mutation to update a particular resource the other advantage of graphql is if you have a legacy rest api data source it can connect it can plug in with all these things graphql server doesn't need a direct okay you need to a database you can also integrate it with the existing rest apis graphql is all about schema okay we are we are going to define the api definition using sdl language graphql language we we are going to define the different schema types okay user is a type course is a type what all attributes what all parameters they can have and same kind of set of parameters we will be exposing to the client okay so all these advantages are these okay the bandwidth round trip time it is actually a definition we are writing in the apis 
and we can actually get a lot of required data in a single call using GraphQL and it can act as the API gateway for the aggregation of the data coming from different source. Here you can have a one another REST API source. Okay, let's say the simple example is we are actually also talking to this. If we have the REST, then you have to actually call these multiple REST endpoints through the different different endpoints. But here what I did is this GraphQL server can act as aggregator for the data coming from this REST API, data coming from this REST API and for you, for the client, this is the original, so, uh, this is the actual source of information from which you are getting. The GraphQL server is aggregating the user data coming from the user service, uh, the order data from coming from the order service, some more data coming from the data source and then aggregating and then sending it back. So you don't need to make additional calls. And this is the win-win situation for the mobile clients, okay? So this is all we have as a difference or similarities between the GraphQL and the REST APIs. We'll explore more about GraphQL in the next videos.